guys and welcome to Feywood. So I've been teasing out in a couple of videos that I want to make another pair of wings. It's become a bit of a tradition here on my channel to make a pair of wings every year and I love the idea of um, exploring all different ways to do that because there's so many different ways to make something um, and wings are no exception. So I was thinking uh, and racking my brain of different ways I could approach the wings this time because I have a few different things you know percolating in my mind of how I might make some new wings and I was mindlessly scrolling on Facebook as you do and came across uh, the work of Sean Avery who's an artist in Australia and was making sculptures out of CDs and it really got me thinking how cool would it be to have a pair of wings made of CDs because I don't know if you've had a look at CDs recently and I'll try not to blind you but they look really freaking cool this lovely holographic shine could you imagine that in a pair of costume wings so I had to get my Simply Neologica on I'm sure Christine would absolutely approve of hollow wings and I decided to promptly go and buy myself a huge stack <laughs> of CDs. These babies are really freaking heavy. I hope the end result is not quite so heavy but we shall see right now. Oh, holy cow. So I figure the first things first is we definitely need to construct the shape of the wings. Um, now with these wings they're not going to be like fairy wings this time. I'm going to go more for angel wings and the reason being is that anytime you have something small like this that you have to really piece together it doesn't lend itself that well to a fairy wing because you're gonna have to you know uh, piece bits and pieces together and I just can't see a way to really make that look cohesive as a pair of fairy wings plus I haven't yet explored the angel wings on my channel so I figure let's do that as well so we're gonna make a pair of holographic angel wings out of CDs. So I tried these on. Um, I've only made one wing template because I can use the same template for both wings. But I definitely recommend trying on your template, like holding it against your back, because you might think that the wing is the right size or shape or whatever, but when you see it in relation to how it will be when you're wearing it, it might totally change what you think about it. So. I've done a couple of try-ons so far. The first one made me realise I want the wing to arch up further up here because then you will see like this part of the wing um, above my shoulder. I've also carved in a little bit here. Coming down here I thought I might actually carve a bit of the wing out here just to give it a little bit more um, dimension I guess because it was just looking like just such a big slab of a wing I guess I don't know how else to put it and bearing in mind this is not going to be a straight line down here this is going to be feathers and everything so I'm having to think about that anyway <laughs> thought I would just stop and chat about how we're going with the shape of the wings this part here is so important because you're going to put a lot of time and effort into a pair of wings usually so it pays to spend a bit of time just getting your template perfected. So to get the shape of the wings I taped the wire around my little template there and that really helped me to form the wire more easily. Once I connected the wire up I was able to cut it off the template and it would retain that shape.
and I've used the chicken wire there just to give me something to work on top of. And I really also used that to form the shape of the wings. So I was trying to push the chicken wire into the shape that I wanted. Now this is upholstery foam and I used uh, some offcuts that I had from when I made my throne. Making sure to keep my knife nice and sharp with my little honing stone there, which is really important. I actually didn't quite have enough foam for the second wing, so I had to glue it a bit to the end of it there. So you just got to measure that out. It was fairly straightforward and I used a bit of contact cement to glue them together. Now I've learnt from Adam Savage that you don't uh, paint on your contact cement. You're meant to uh, work with it till it becomes stringy and then dab it on there. Recent videos he's had showed uh, this creature shop doing it that way and they said that is absolutely the way you should do it. So. I'll go by them. They seem to know what they're doing. Holy cow. <laughs> I am absolutely caked in foam dust. Well, I'm progressing through these wings pretty well and I haven't checked in with you guys for a little bit. Uh, but I am making these little... Uh, curved foam bits to go on the outer edge of the wings and I was trying to work out how to smooth them out and my husband reminded me oh you should try the Dremel I tried a couple of bits the um I had it like an engraving bit that didn't work but definitely the sa little sanding disc bits oh they they chew through this really well if not too well um so if you're not careful, it gets away from you. I was like, oh yeah, do, 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 and then chunk, and I'm like, oh fuck. Uh, so I recommend take your time, and when you think you're taking your time, go even slower. <sighs> because the last thing you want to do is like be progressing really nice with this lovely piece of foam, and then what I just did here, I don't know if you can even see it, but I <laughs> chunked a big chunk out of it. Um, so I ended up using a little bit of contact cement and, um, oh, I didn't close that, and sticking a little bit of foam into the gash and that seems to have fixed it up. Definitely works really well. I am absolutely caked in black foam shit though, so <laughs> I don't know if you can see all of the mess that's gone everywhere and I 100% should have had glasses on while I did this and I didn't think it would kick up this much. I'll have to remember that for next time. Like, crazy. Um, all right, well, I think I fully just choked on a little bit of foam that flew down into the back of my throat, so that was fun. Uh, yeah, again, wear a mask. Don't do what I do. Um, do as I say, not as I do, or something along those lines. Um, so where to from here? Basically, I need to stick these on. I think I'm just going to continue on with the contact cement. I was thinking about spray on glue, but like it's just, it's going to go everywhere. Whereas I think I could get a little sponge and just be a bit more precise with the contact cement. So I might do that. I'm thinking I'm going to put some sort of skin on these, just like some sort of um, material or something or other, just to give me a surface that's... Uh, you know, less open weave, open weave than chicken wire. Yeah, then we should at least have a frame of some wings we can work with. I think it's gone up my nose. I'm pretty sure I've just inhaled it. <sighs> the things I do for you guys. <laughs>
feeling a little bit like Christine the Science Queen. Christine! Um, <laughs> it doesn't work so well with Lady Faye the Science Queen. Doesn't have the same ring to it, uh, but we are going to do a little science. Or prospecting? I don't know, we're digging for hollow. <laughs> and I've got to work out the best way to get to the hollow through the little plastic coating that's on CDs. Now looking into this, I figure there's two methods that I've seen used and one is with boiling water, which exhibit A, I went and boiled a kettle of water. And the other way is by using a utility knife to kind of pry it off. I don't know which one's easier, but whatever one is easier is the one I want to use for the wings because I need to do a lot of these and if this is going to be a pain in the butt, I need to know which one's going to speed it up just a little bit. So we're going to try both methods and see which one wins. Boil, boil, toil and trouble. Something, something, something. I forget the rest of it. <laughs> Alright, well, while that does its thing, I'll give it a minute. I am going to attempt not to cut my hand. <laughs> uh, this could all go south. Let's see what happens when I try and pry this off. I'm not even entirely sure where to pry from. Mm. Right, that is not working out. Uh, let me see here. Can I? Ugh. Mm. They make this look so easy in the YouTube videos. She not working. <laughs> I cannot, cannot do it. I may have to revisit some YouTube videos to work out what the fuck. Let's see how these things are going. They're not working. What? Why? <laughs> this is a public service announcement. If you want to do some crafting and you want to do it with the holographic CD, DVD type thing and you see all those nifty things where they pry off the plastic or whatever, it's not a CD they're using. No, 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 no. Pay attention. It is a DVD. <sighs> I just, I just sunk 50 bucks. Not that that's a lot of money, I, I, I realise. But, you know, look, for me, it's a lot of money on CDs for a craft project that I cannot use. I'm going to look into other ways to use these, though. I've seen people use, like, kitchen shears. In fact, I think that uh, sculptor said he used kitchen shears. I've also seen still using like the hot water method, putting it in the hot water so that it softens it before you cut. Um, I have a, a heat gun, maybe I can like heat it up and use it and stuff. I don't know, I need to, I need more science. <laughs> I need to play around with this more. But let me just say to you here and now, there is a difference. If you want the really easy to cut, easy to use DVDs um, and you know you want to pull the plastic off, you want to cut it into all sorts of weird and wonderful shapes, you want the DVD. If you want more plasticky, spiky, whatever bits, you want a CD. <laughs> I think potentially there is a way for me to get the white stuff off the back. I've seen people use tape. I'm going to play around with that, see if I can get that to work because potentially I could use them that way. Otherwise you're going to see white or potentially I could spray paint the back so that you don't see that. There's options. I'm determined to not have this be a waste. <laughs> But if it's nothing else, at least it's a warning to you all because I always seem to have these in my uh, pre big projects. Some sort of like, don't do what I did. <sighs> It'd be nice if that didn't happen for once. But yeah, don't do what I did. <laughs> Righto, well guys, it's a week later and a couple of eBay orders later. I have bought myself some DVDs this time. I am really scared to actually try these out. These are meant to 
prior part from my understanding but I don't know if all DVDs are created equal so we shall see if I am stuck in the same boat I can tell you this I am not 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 purchasing any more CDs or DVDs or what have you to make this thing I have already spent enough money on that <laughs> now in a in addition to that, I want to make sure I don't waste the CDs that I had. So I bought myself some handy dandy kitchen shears because my understanding from all of the videos and slash information I've read is that a strong pair of scissors is the way to go. And these had reasonable feedback on uh, Amazon and came quickly which is what I was after so that I could keep going with this project and not be stuck. Now I did play around a little bit with some other techniques and I don't know everything's not quite going to plan at the moment so I've seen some people try and take off like the layer of you know color on a CD with tape it works <laughs> but it also took off the holographic part as well so it just gouged a big hole in all the color in total so if you want like plain plastic that might be the way to go but as far as trying to pull off one layer and leave the holographic color there i didn't find that to work out too well so that was a bit of a bust as well the hot water technique didn't really soften the CDs to make them easier to cut from what I could tell but what I'm thinking is that combined with these babies and maybe my heat like heat gun I might be able to soften them with that enough that cutting them doesn't kill my wrist <laughs> so anyway we've got a lot to go and I better get my ass into gear and get started <laughs> Oh my god guys what have I got myself into with this project I have only done a very small portion of this wing so far and I already have a blister and I still need to cut a crap ton more of the CDs um, I'm trying to work out the easiest way to cut them uh, not only for myself but also to help you guys as well uh, the methods I have tried so far is boiling water, which I don't think really works. Uh, I've used my heat gun, which I think is a really solid way to do it. I don't think you could get away with an, a um, blow dryer. I just don't think it would heat it up enough. But if you, but you know, for twenty thirty dollars, you can get a craft heat gun, uh, similar that you would use for like embossing powders and stuff. That works really well. It does take a little while to heat up the CD enough that you can cut it. If, like if you don't heat it up, it tends to want to shatter. So, uh, and maybe not entirely shatter, but you just don't get those nice lines. It will start to break where you don't want it really when you're cutting it. The last way I've tried is with my blowtorch. <laughs> now this one, you know, you want to be careful with safety. Obviously I've got like heat proof brick and all of that sort of stuff because I've used it for PMC before. I also keep my door open. You don't need much of a pass over on this and you won't really get, I, I haven't really got much of a, a plastic, melty plastic smell because you're really not melting it enough to do that you're just doing it just enough to soften it and what I've realized is there's like this fine line there's this Goldilocks uh, part where it's either too hard to cut if you got, don't do it enough or if it's too soft it starts to bend and curl too much so it can be tricky um, so there's like con pros and cons for that method and the heat gun method like the heat gun you're not going to have any trouble with it going getting too melty unless you've got a much more heavy duty heat gun than I have in which case maybe I don't know I don't have one so I don't know so I find that I don't have any issue with the cuts 
curling up or anything but it is harder to cut so and with this it's a lot softer to cut depending on how long you put it on for and quicker to heat up for sure like it's much faster to to do it but if you are not careful then you kind of ruin the part that you're doing and I still need to do it like a bit at a time you can't like do the whole CD at one go it does cool down super fast so by the time you cut it you'd have to redo it so I'm just doing it like probably a portion about that big at a time cutting that into the little chunks and then leaving it doing it again going on my merry way now of course you could probably skip all of this palaver if you just bought the right thing like I didn't do um, which is DVDs but it seems to me from what I've learned is not all DVDs are created equal some DVDs uh, come off like so that so the CD you can't split the the plastic off the DVD you can uh, but apparently some DVDs will um, you can peel that plastic layer off really easy cut it really easy and all of that uh turns out i didn't buy that type <laughs> oh yay and i am not buying any more bloody cds dvds or whatever it, none of it um i have so many and i'm gonna have to think of probably additional projects at this point because i have just so many but apparently yeah they're not all created equal mine are coming off not smoothly so some parts come off okay then some of them have like blue streaks and some bits don't it's not the most amazing thing ever so uh, we shall see how that goes because I will need to um, again see if I can perfect a way to peel that off and get the most usability out of the DVDs I have because I am hoping to God I have enough DVDs to do the inside and the outside of both of these wings so we shall see so you can see I started at the bottom and then overlapped and worked my way all the way up to the top that's the best way to work and when it comes to doing the blow torching you've got to be really careful you can easily do too much you only want just enough that it's just cuttable really otherwise it starts to curl and bend and become a mess and I did just trim off some little bits at the end just so that it wasn't quite as sharp right oh guys it has been a really long time since I've checked in with you guys I've been on holiday in between doing these wings and we're back and continuing on with the project and I thought it was time high time I checked in with you guys and let you know where we're at uh, so we have this sort of outer edge of the wings done well there's a little bit more I might do on it touch-ups and so forth but what I realized was after doing all of the CDs and everything and then sort of feeling it and feeling how sharp this bloody thing is I'm like well that's not gonna work for anyone is it if I wear these outside I'm gonna poke everyone I'm gonna scratch everyone I'm gonna get caught on everyone I mean I still might get caught on everyone but <laughs> um, but I'm like well that's all well and good to make a really cool pair of wings but if you can't wear them anywhere because you're worried about hurting people then that's not very good is it so anyway I was racking my brain of how I could fix this and I came to the conclusion that I will glue a little seed bead on the end of each of the uh, feathers uh, so that it it's it's just softer like it's just not as sharp then um, the other thing you could do is just cut it so it's not as sharp that's probably what I should have done um, but hindsight's a wonderful thing and I don't know I kind of like the look of it anyway with the beads I don't know if you can see that but like it gives it a really interesting kind of look these are quickly becoming more dragon wings than they are like angel wings anyway they were sort of looking originally I was thinking angel wings but I'm feeling I'm feeling like this looks more dragon so we'll see I definitely would recommend doing something on the ends of these though whether you use a bead or you just glue some other thing or you just cut it so it's not a sharp bloody 
<laughs> like little daggers coming out of your wings. That's an option as well. <laughs> anyway, I still have a lot to go, so let's continue on. Now, I definitely didn't find any difference from using the heat gun on the DVDs before prying them apart, but I have heard that sometimes it does help, so it probably depends on the type of DVDs that you have. What I was trying to do was to cut the largest feathers I could from these DVDs as well, and you can only make them so big unless you want to stick bits together or have them curl right around. Uh, but I did the best I could and I did try and use larger feathers at the bottom of the wings like would be on a natural pair of wings and then start to make them smaller as it went up the wing. Also to note the hot glue does damage the DVD somewhat so you do need to be a little bit careful that where you're gluing you'll be overlapping another DVD. Potentially you could try a different type of glue I just wanted to try the hot glue because I just found it really quick. I think contact cement potentially could work as well though if you wanted to do that way. And then I uh, rounded the ends of the ones that were going to be at the very top of it so it just looked nice and brushed away all the hot glue. I thought I would check in at this point. It Again, it's been a really long time between working on things. I was unwell for a while, so these wings have kind of sat here for a bit, unfortunately. But I've done one side of them and we're ready to do the other side. I ran out of DVDs though. Um, I've still got a ton of CDs left. Like, I think over 150 CDs because yeah um buying the wrong thing and also like i didn't want to use the cds for all of it because they're heavier so you don't really want to add any weight where you don't need to and i have a feeling these could be too heavy as as it is so we'll see i mean i'm gonna forge ahead at any rate but they could be too heavy um what i need to do now is start working on the other side of the wings uh, and i might also try attaching them to the bracket thing this is the same kind of big massive u-bolt i've used in the past for wings so uh, i'm going to use the same thing wrap some wire around it i think i may do that before i start um, attaching any more you know like covering this in dvds just so that if i need to use more wire which i think i do um, like the wings need a little bit more to hold them up so I might need to just use a bit more wire, just to add some more stability there. Um, and then I can cover that with DVDs or whatever if I need to. Whereas if I cover it all and then find I need to put more wire on, I'm in trouble. So that's where we're at. Just a quick check-in. And I'm going to forge ahead with this because this project has been taking such a long time. And I'm really hoping to get this out to you this week because, oh my god, it has just gone on and on and on this one. <laughs> so when I made these wings, I left a bit of wire at the end of each of the wings and I made it just the right size for my U-bolt there. I bought my U-bolt from Bunnings, which is an Australian hardware store. If you don't have a Bunnings, just check your hardware store for the largest U-bolt you can. If you can't get a U-bolt, you can absolutely just make a little circle of wire instead and attach things to that. I just like the U-bolts because they're really strong. And I did add two rows of wire just to help the wings um, with structure. Now again, this is the fence wire that I've used in a number of projects. I'll link to the one that I use down in the description box. If you don't have something like that, I would recommend again going to your hardware store and looking for something that's similar to coat hanger wire. Fence wire is often um, really sturdy. It doesn't really matter the thickness um, as much as it matters that it's a hard strength. You do want a thick wire if you can. Uh, mine's I think about two mil. These ones didn't come in gauges like other wire comes, um, but yeah, thick, strong, kind of like coat hanger wire. 
And then I've um, attached the wire with some stitches, some hot glue, and then I put some scraps of leather on top just to really give me some surface area to glue on top of the wire. It just makes it really strong. Now, you'll probably see how uh, difficult it was to get patches of holographic from those DVDs. They were quite patchy. Um, hopefully you guys have a better time than I did splitting them apart and I wish I could give you some nuggets of wisdom with that but I did the best I could and some came out okay and some didn't and it really didn't seem to matter what I did. And I did use a bit of lace at the base there just to give it a nice finishing touch. And then you definitely want to try and um, put something like lace or ribbon around where you've attached that wire so there's no sharp bits or anything. So I had some excess uh, lace ribbon and I've used that wrapped around. And then I've just bent it a bit so that it had a bit more shape to it. Now I did use some spray varnish on these which changed the colour somewhat to a sort of purple shade. I just wanted to protect the DVDs. But I like the way the colour came out actually. And here's the finished product. Now DVDs are quite delicate so you do need to be careful with that when you're using them and trying on the wings and wearing them out. Maybe consider that when you're constructing them um, and try and do something to keep them protected. It's mainly going to be the ones at the bottom that could break. I've used the same straps I always use for these wings. Again, I'll link those in the description box. I hope you guys have enjoyed this project and I'll see you next time in Feywood. Bye guys.